On April 25th, an article was published in the Washington Post stating that neurologists at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York had stumbled upon a small cohort of COVID-19 patients that were suffering from strokes. These patients were otherwise healthy, and most of them were young, being in their 30s, 40s, or 50s. And these individuals who were suffering from strokes were suffering from a type of stroke called a large vessel occlusion. And this is one of the most deadliest type of strokes, as this is caused by the blockade of vessels leading to the brain. The article suggests that the abnormal clotting patterns seen in some COVID-19 patients is due to immune response rather than being an effect of the virus directly. Nonetheless, the amount of patients that went into the ICU for treatment with stroke symptoms during the COVID-19 surge was double compared to before COVID-19. While this is still a rare occurrence and there are very few cases per location, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how COVID-19 could be causing strokes. The first thing I want to cover today is I want to discuss what exactly a stroke is. There are three types of stroke, hemorrhagic, ischemic, and TIA, or transient ischemic attack, which is also known as mini strokes. A stroke is basically when you have blockage of blood flow to the brain. So this can occur from a blood clot, which is what an ischemic stroke is. It can also be hemorrhagic, which is when a blood vessel in the brain would burst and then we have blood flow directly onto the brain. Or there are TIAs, which could be caused by a clot temporarily blocking blood to a certain area of the brain, but then the clot is dislodged so the symptoms dissipate. Now, the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Canada has an acronym for recognizing stroke victims. The acronym is FAST the F standing for face. The first thing they say to look for is look at the person's face, check if it's drooping, check if it's uneven. The second thing is arms. For this part you want to see if the patient can raise both arms. Third is S which is for speech. Can the patient speak to you? Is the speech slurred? And finally T is for time. Time is very important when an individual is having a stroke. You have to act immediately. You have to call 911 right away or get them into the hospital. Even if it's TIA, TIA often signals the occurrence of a larger stroke later on down the road. So why do strokes happen? Strokes are happening in individuals because of a blood clot. If there is blockage of the blood flow to the brain, then the brain isn't getting oxygen and our neurons need oxygen to function. As we know, our neurons carry out our day-to-day -day functioning. They send signals throughout the brain. They allow us to think, to feel, and act. And so if they're not getting oxygen, they can't function properly. And even worse, if this lack of oxygen is prolonged, there can be necrosis or cell death. With that being said, how might strokes be happening in COVID-19 patients? On April 22nd, also in the Washington Post, there was an article published about how Atlanta doctors were observing abnormalities in clotting in COVID-19 patients. In fact, 20 to 30 percent of patients in this hospital were seen to have blood problems. And it has been observed that there are deviations in blood clotting within COVID-19 patients. Autopsies of COVID-19 patients have shown that they have microclots within the lungs. And these microclots have the possibility of breaking off and traveling to the heart or to the brain. If there is a clot blocking the heart, that would cause a heart attack. And if there is a clot blocking blood flow to the brain, that would cause a stroke. Now, doctors suggest that this is because of hemostatic derangement, which is overreacting of the blood in response to the virus. 
We've seen problems like this happen in Ebola and other viruses, including influenza. But still, at the end of the day, we are left with the question as to why this is happening. The number one prediction is that something called disseminated intravascular coagulation is happening as a complication of COVID-19. Disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, is the abnormal clotting of blood in people who perhaps are suffering infection or injury. Basically, DIC is when we have an overactive clotting process. It can be caused by inflammation, severe tissue damage, or infection with a virus. And some of the complications of DIC include ARDS, or Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, which is actually one of the main complications of COVID-19 as well. Again, with the clotting, we also have the added possibility of having heart attack or stroke occur. Now, studies dating back as far as 1973 have shown that patients with influenza have also had similar complications, and this would be because of the immune response to a virus in the body, which could cause DIC, which could then lead to further complications with the possibility of a stroke occurring. In flu patients, we know that this happens because there's prolonged activation of thromboplastin. And then we have uncontrolled thrombosis. What does this mean? Well, in the body, we have three parts needed for clotting. We need our endothelial cells, we need our platelets, and we need coagulation factors. Usually, we have control over this with anticoagulants, which stop the clotting. However, when we have a hyperactivated immune response or something called the cytokine storm happening, this can go haywire and we can have abnormal amounts of clotting. Clots can just be forming within the blood rather than at a surface of attack or some place that needs healing in the body. And these clots can then get lodged in blood vessels causing hypoxia in regions which need oxygen. Now, we talked about the cytokine storm in one of our other videos, but basically this is hyperactivation of the immune system, and with that we have activation of our clotting pathways. Now finally, as of April 30th, there's now a paper under review by Professor O'Donnell, who comes out of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and he's looking at COVID-19 coagulopathy. What they saw in their study is that there's an increase in D-dimers in COVID-19 patients. D-dimers are these proteins that are left over when clots are being broken down. As soon as a clot forms, the body starts to break it down, and so D-dimers will then enter the blood, and this is a measure of clotting within the blood as well. D-dimers increase in stroke victims and so this increase in COVID-19 patients also indicates a similar amount of clotting in the blood. With all these patients, regardless of the fact that they had increased D-dimers, the progression to DIC was very rare. However, these patients were treated with LMWH or low molecular weight heparin, which is an anticoagulant to stop the blood from clotting. Whether or not all patients should be treated with anticoagulants is questionable at this point because we don't want to give too many blood thinners and cause further complications with that. However, to be able to prevent clotting that could possibly lead to a heart attack or stroke is also something that needs to be thought about. So we're going to finish off there. What we learned today is that COVID-19 can cause abnormal clotting within individuals. This abnormal clotting is known as DIC or disseminated intravascular coagulation. DIC has also been observed in flu patients in the past. It's caused because the clotting system goes out of whack in victims who are fighting off viruses. Finally, we learned that clots can block blood vessels, particularly if veins going to the brain are blocked, we can have 
hypoxia in areas of the brain which can cause stroke and depending on which region of the brain is affected there will be different symptoms displayed. Lastly we learned the acronym FAST to help recognize stroke victims by looking at their face, arms, speech, and finally acting in a timely manner. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new today and I hope you're staying happy and healthy. Also wanted to let you know that this week we've tried something new. There is a link in the description for a quiz. So if you've been paying attention to this video and you want to test your knowledge, go ahead down below. There's a quick little multiple choice quiz that you can test yourself with. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you leave any comments or questions you have down below. And come back next week for another video on NeuroPsyQ. Stay happy and healthy, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.